Now that's a locust, the scourge of mankind, and surprisingly it's as much a part of the London scene as that deaf aid, or this garden high over a famous Kensington store. Believe it or not, there are enough locusts within a hundred yards of this high life garden to strip it bare in ten minutes. London, of course, is full of surprises. Take this one in, but think of locusts as well as daft ducks who only know this roof-high home. An unexpected garden, quite immune from those locusts which still threaten two-thirds of the globe, yet in a London laboratory alongside, a million locusts a year are born. Those men wear plastic suits to protect themselves from the allergy-making dusts that locusts create. London has the only anti-locust research centre in the world, where, of course, they breed these little gregarious grasshopper creatures to try to find out how to rid the world of their threat. It's a legacy for the world from the days when so many marginal farmlands at the mercy of the locust swarms were our colonies. They study their feeding habits, their fads and their weaknesses. They watch the way they lay their eggs deep in the sand. They're getting to know this enemy of mankind intimately, with a view to destroying its menace through its natural habits. Nothing now is overlooked about the one creature that challenges human life at the very places where it's chanciest to grow a basic crop. A locust kept alone is greenish. But when he's introduced to others, they find he slowly becomes straw-coloured like the rest. That may or may not be a curiosity of little use in locust control. But how do locusts react, for instance, to wind? Slow scientific stuff, this is. Studying all the conditions locusts live in to see how best they can be discouraged and destroyed. They tend to go downwind, but what happens if the scent of grass reaches them? The scent of grass alters everything. They make towards it with one accord. The task now is to see what other scents attract them, and if one can be made to lure them to their doom. For here, destruction of locusts is the only aim. Locusts, they find, use their antennae to show when they're on the scent of something they like. So the thing is to graft their reaction when there's a sniff of food in the wind but there are also insecticide smells to test. See how the graph is altered by a scent. Now they're about to test an insect killer on a locust on the wing, flying on the spot in a wind tunnel, delicately poised in what must be far more like his natural element than the laboratory tanks he's raised in. Strobo lights show what area of wing surface is presented to the various sprays. And all this, like the evolution of deaf aids used throughout the world, is an exclusive part of London's legacy. Here too, they plot actual swarms and correlate fieldwork from every continent. Most of us would need more than a London-born deaf aid by the time we'd heard half the things that go on in London, like this war against the world's great locust invasions.